Why has it been so important for you not to conform to today's standard of beauty? Because when we, when we, when we think about today's standard of beauty, what we're really talking about is um, a Eurocentric standard of beauty, one standard of beauty. And as we all know, one size does not fit all as it pertains to beauty. And so to even try to attain um, or reach that standard, it's almost a trap. And so instead of attempting to become some, my nose will never look a certain way. My lips will never look a certain way. My skin will never look a certain way, nor my hair or my hair texture. And so that's the first part of self-love is accepting that. And once you can accept that, then this, whatever the standard of beauty is, doesn't even, it has no bearing on you. It starts with self-love. So the st when we talk about standard, we're talking about Eurocentric standard. And I am a black woman. I will never fit into the European standard of beauty. So why do you believe so many women embrace a European concept of beauty? Because the European concept of beauty has become mainstream and most people think in order to be seen or in order to be beautiful, you need to be um, what the European standard of beauty, what the European standard says beauty is. Um, so mainstream equals being seen, mainstream for some people equals worth and value. And so some people try to attain that uh, because they're trying to be something or be worth something or be of some value in this society. How important is it to love oneself and what is the consequence if we don't? I know self-esteem plays a large role of self-identity. So how important is it that one love oneself and what's the consequence if we don't? Oh my. Um, it's very important that we love our that we love ourselves um if we don't it is detrimental to just our entire existence it's it will if we don't love ourselves we are going to begin to take on someone else's definition of who we are or who we should be um if we don't love ourselves it affects our decision making it affects the people that we allow in our we allow in our spaces. It affects how we allow others to treat us and how we treat others. But most most importantly, how we treat ourselves. So without self love, you're just sort of out here just wandering and taking on all these different identities. And as we all know, these things change with the seasons. You know, today it's nice to have. Uh, really thin ways and a big butt tomorrow <laughs> it's going to be you need to be this big you know so it's really important to embrace who you are and love on who you are so that you don't be easily swayed with or accept someone else's definition of who you who you are who you should be and who has no concept of your essence specifically as an African woman well this and you brought something very interesting up and I know the beauty industry is a billion dollar industry which black women contribute a large part of. Does hair define a woman? And I notice that you have a clean cut. Why do you choose to go against the grain of not getting the hair weave, the relaxers and stuff? Not saying that women who do get those things are not confident, but does hair really define a woman and why do you choose the style that you have? Uh, no. I do not think that hair defines a woman. I think hair is another form of self-expression. This idea of it's just hair and it doesn't define me is, is really not true. It really isn't. Um, I believe in energy. I believe in the things that we wear. Uh, it's, a, it's a form of expressing where we're at currently. It's the same thing with hair. When a woman wants to feel confident, she goes, she get her hair done a certain way. There are certain hairstyles that she will choose depending on the occasion. That is all part of expression. So the idea of trying to separate ourselves from how we do our hair or how we dress is really nonsense. It's, it's, it, we use it as an excuse because we don't want to have the real conversation around why we choose to wear our hair the way we do. The reason why I choose to cut my hair low is because um, when I, from the age of maybe 13, I had locks all the way up to like maybe early 20s. And then um, I kind of branched out and started braiding my hair. 
and uh, I probably had a week maybe once or twice um, and it just it just didn't, it didn't suit me so what made me decide eventually I grew it out I had an afro I did the natural hair thing what made me eventually decide to let go of it is I began to do some self work on myself and I realized that I wanted to live a life I kind of embrace minimalism to a certain extent I wanted to live in a way where I didn't have all these distractions as a black woman and our hair could be like a major burden depending you know some of us wouldn't go certain places because we can't get our hair done I didn't want that distraction I already had some other things I needed to work on and so without even thinking about what am I gonna look like um, the shape of my head which I have a little dent right here in the back of my head without thinking of all of that I just decided to let it go and it was one of the most freeing liberating things that I have ever done and I haven't turned back since um, will I grow my hair back probably but it definitely wouldn't be permed or anything I'm probably gonna free form because I just feel like I just don't want my hair to occupy so much of my time because I'm so much more than that and I think once you remove your hair you start to look at different as uh, parts of yourself and really start to say okay I need to work on this because now you could take that energy that you was, fo was focused on I need my hair to look a certain way and put it somewhere else so does hair define us not necessarily but I definitely think it's an extension of who we are in the moment it is definitely an expression of the um, energy space that we're in in that in that moment yeah. so in closing I know um, there's some women and some young women who may be watching this if you can give some advice to a young girl who is looking for an identity I know a lot of things that we learn is through sight what would you share with someone who is battling with self-identification and self-love? What would you share with them? Um, I would definitely say you have to know that your worth isn't necessarily attached to anything outside of you. It is an, in, it's, it's an inheritance. You are born worthy. You are born with value. The issue that you, we often run into is that you look at children they know this we know this from a very young age until experience and the world begins to tell us no it's not enough to just be you you have to be something else it's not enough to just be you have to be this you have to be that you have to be tall you have to be you know thick you have to be slim all of these different things you have to know within yourself that you are worthy without being attached to anything outside of you. That's the first thing. The second thing is to celebrate your beauty, celebrate your uniqueness, celebrate the things that make you you. Um, don't compare yourself, you know, comparison, that right there will crush you because you're going to always find that someone may have something, I don't want to say better, just different. And oftentimes we try to get things that we don't, we try to go after things that we don't have. So it's like, oh, I don't have small feet. I wish I could have small feet. And the person with, with small feet wish that they could have bigger feet. So you really just need to begin to embrace and celebrate the small things about yourself. Look at your nose, take time in the mirror, look at that mole on your, uh, on the, on the, above your eyebrow. Let's look at small things, wear your hair different ways. You know, um, when I was younger, uh, I used to get teased a lot about my forehead. So <laughs> I used to wear hairstyle to like cover my forehead. Now, I don't know who I am outside of not having a bigger forehead. Like that's a part of me, it's a part of my identity and I love it. So find those things, and you know, this takes time. I just want to make that clear. I don't want you to think that you just wake up and then you, all of a sudden, you love yourself. Especially if you're constantly bombarded with images and, um, and um, things that tell you don't love yourself because nothing about you is to love. It takes time, it takes time. So you just start small. Start small, start, you know, finding the little things about yourself to celebrate and just celebrate them. Just so don't don't wait for permission. Just do it. Just do it. And and the more you do it, you start to cultivate that within yourself. You start to build that. And let me tell you something. You find that you will inspire others to do the same. Once you start walking in your authentic self, others around you take notice, 
and they want to know like how do you get so confident where does that come from you know so definitely I would say love yourself know your worth and know your value you don't need to attach yourself to anything to be valuable you were born that way just receive it accept it and celebrate it this is those some beautiful words i definitely appreciate you wanting to share the love and hopefully and prayerfully that someone can see that how you love yourself they can do the same and we don't have to subside ourselves to the standards of what society says and we love ourselves for who we are may god continue to bless you and we definitely appreciate you and we will be seeing more of you very soon so may allah bless you thank you very much dear sister thank you